uh, online hear us? Please put yes or something in the chat. I guess the off oh, thumbs up. Yep. Okay. Awesome. Thumbs up. All right. Great. Okay. Welcome to another package demo. Um, to remind all of the in-person people, all these little round buttons are microphones and for the whole room and they are all on and there's no muting them. So uh, try not to talk or make too much noise. Uh, today, there's going to be the presentation by uh, Christina Kova, who is going to talk about genomic distribution. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for, for joining me. Um, my name is Christina, and I, um, I'm a PhD student at, at the University of Virginia, where I'm co-mentored by Nathan Sheffield, who is sitting here with us, and by, by David Obel. And today, I'm going to be presenting you our um, bioconductor package named Genomic Distribution for um, you know, summary and visualization of genomic regions. Um, which we created in, in Sheffield Lab. At the beginning, I would like to say, I would like to make this, you know, don't be scared to ask questions. I don't want this to be a monologue uh, where I'm going through things. And if something is uncertain, you don't want to ask a question because I have speech prepared. Like if we don't cover everything, it's okay. I would rather you ask questions if, if there is something uncertain. Um, but at first, I'm just going to give a short intro to the package to kind of give introduction. Um, I'm going to first start by, by introducing what are genomic region sets that we're actually summarizing and introducing. I, I am aware that everyone at this conference is going to be probably familiar what genomic region sets are or what genomic regions are. But, you know, um, just to make sure. So please bear with me. So... <clears throat> What are, what are genomic region sets? Genomic region sets are basically products of epigenomic experiments and epigenetic analysis, which carry a certain property. So here I gave an example of ChIP-seq, ChIP-seq experiment, because I work mostly with ChIP-seq data, where you, know, you have your nuclei, you cross-link all the proteins to it, you pull down the proteins of interest, and then you send the sequences that carry your given histone mark or transcription factor for sequencing. What you do next is you map your, uh, map your sequences to your reference genome. Um, you find enriched regions, which are, um, which are basically carrying the property that you're looking for. Um, we call those peaks. And then you can perform differential analysis where you're basically comparing is the le are the levels of, of my histone mark or, or, or whatever, are, are the number of reads mapped to those regions different between healthy versus disease, or are they scaling with a certain factor? And what you end up with is basically a table where you have your, your region of interest, so your genomic regions, which is practically just yeah, genomic co coordinates, um, with a given property, you know, whether the region is upregulated or downregulated, but in the end, these are just genomic coordinates. Um, they don't really tell you much. So I like to view those um, like coordinates on a map. If I give you two regions on a map without any additional information, there isn't really that much that you can tell me what could be possible difference between those two regions, right? But once you start actually adding layers to the map, you can start making conclusions. What could be the possible? What could be the possible differences between those two locations? You know, and and sources of whatever whatever you might be looking for. So, keeping that in mind, that is basically what we're trying to accomplish with genomic distributions <clears throat> in relationship to to genomic regions. So let's say you have um, genomic region sets, so a BET file, your genomic coordinates, um, or you, even better, you want to compare two BET files, what are the differences between that? You simply plug those to genomic distributions and you can start annotating. Um, you can, so you can get, th th these are some examples of what genomic distributions can do. So you can do, or you can get distributions over chromosomes, you can, um, you can infer cell type specificity of your um, of your regions if you're doing bulk experiment, 
Um, we, <clears throat> I'm going to get into details a little bit uh, in in a bit. You can in, uh, you can calculate the distances from transcription start site distribution across genomic partitions, so like RMR regions and promoters and exons, introns, whatever distances um, between um, closest neighbors, GC content, and I don't think that this is this is actually the full list. So in this workshop, we'll I'll show you how to how to produce these kind of plots, and um, yeah, um, how to actually also like some of these um, for some of these plots you actually need to reference data. For example, you uh, for the partition plots, the distribution across genomic partitions, you need to provide a reference, you know, like we need to know where the promoters are, where the exons are. So I'll show you how to build those references too. Um, but before we get actually to the actual workshop where I'll be showing you the functionalities, I would like to just highlight a few, few strengths of genomic distributions over other, other packages. Like we, I am aware that there are um, packages out there which might which might have similar similar um, functionality. So what is so great about genomic distributions? We actually put a lot of effort into design of genomic distributions, and here I'm highlighting the key strengths. So all of our functions um, can take single or multiple inputs. So if you have if you have one uh, one genomic region set, so one bed file or two bed files or ten bed files, if you want to, that you want to um, compare, you can pass those simply to genomic uh, to genomic distributions. You're using the same set of functions, um, whether you're using single or multiple inputs. I'll show you that how to do that in the in the workshop. Um, the second strength is that. Uh, where um, where genomic distributions were designed in a way that we're using this modular approach, where you first pass your genomic regions to to calc functions. Those are functions which start with calc. Those calculate the summary properties or features or whatever you might want to call them. Um, and if you want, you can then plot it in your in your own way or if you want to do, yeah, just quick and dirty kind of job, not not dirty, but yeah, if you if you want to um, if you want to use our plot plot function, you just take the output from from the calc function, uh, plug it into plot uh, into our plot functions, and you get you get summary um, either of your single genomic regions or multiple genomic comparison of multiple genomic regions. The um, Additional thing is the output of our plot functions are ggplot objects. So if you don't like the graphics, you can simply edit those. I'll show you also how to do that in, in our workshop. Um, the third advantage is that we really tried to stuff everything, like anything that we could think of into genomic distributions. We really tried to make genomic distributions as rich in functionalities as as possible. So this way, you just if you want. So if you want to compare your genomic regions, you just you just get to use genomic distributions. Um, it's just few lines of in few lines of code. So you just get this this rich summary, and you don't need to find a package for how uh, for calculating the distance from uh, transcription start site and learn how to use the package and then. You know, if you want to get the distribution among across chromosomes, you have to find another package and learn how to use that one again. So, um, and last, you know, but not least, um, advantage is that uh, we really try to we really put an effort into writing genomic distribution. So, so it's fast. We use data table in most of the functions, and when we compared it um, to other other packages, um, we have to say that genomic distributions are really fast. So you can you can process you know large regions or a large number of regions pretty fast. Um, here I would just like to um, talk a little bit before we really dive into about the um, about the 
so, so you would understand the, the names of the functions. So feature is just, let's say, you know, distance to the nearest neighbor. So like first, um, first uh, we have we have functions that starts with calc. Those are the, the functions that are going to calculate the, the summary properties. Uh, we also have um, we have functions. We also provide functions that start with calc and end with ref. So as I told you, for some of the functions, you do need um, genome annotations, and you know that could that could be annoying getting that sometimes. So, but don't worry if you are working with human or mouse data. Um, these are we provide those pre-compiled for you as a part of genomic distributions data package. So like. All you need to do is in these calc feature ref functions is provide your your query and just tell us um, which genome assembly you're using, and um, we provide the the genome annotations. <clears throat> the last set of functions are plot functions, to which you just um, provide the 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 output of the calc functions and and you plot your results. Um, before we get into the workshop, I would like to just acknowledge everyone, you know, this is, this is the last slide of the presentation, so I would like to um, acknowledge um, everyone who has worked on this package, um, all of the members of, of Sheffield Lab, and um, I guess now we can, now we can um, get actually, get actually to the, to the workshop. So, um, I guess I, um, the workshop is, if you go to the workshops, um, under genomic distributions, fast and easy, uh, mm, summary, uh, fast, easy and flexible summary and visualization of genomic regions. Um, I am just going to go through the, through the website. Um, you can, um, here, uh, through the vignette. So here you go to articles, genomic distributions, demo. You know, it's you can uh, if you want to, you can um, just simply you can go to the to the orchestra and run it through there, or you can copy paste copy paste from uh, from here. So in this workshop, um, we will go well. We will go through all of the functionalities offered um, offered by Genomic Distribution, um, which I which I showed you, and I would like to also show you how to. You know, build your reference data in case you're not working with human or mouse data. Um, you don't have to be scared. Uh, creating those annotations isn't um, isn't that hard. You just need to give us your a FASTA file or GTF file, and we have functions that can do everything everything for you. So let's start by loading data. Genomic distributions are are um, accepted either. Um, genomic ranges, genomic ranges object, or if you want to compare multiple data sets, you, you just combine those in genomic region um, into um, GRLand, uh, genomic ranges list object. So like here I'm providing a path to the regions and um, I'm using our layer import function that just, you know, you just need to provide a path and it automatically creates a genomic ranges object. I do like to trim my chromosomes just to keep standard chromosomes just to avoid any kind of problems. But so when we looked into, into, into the loaded data sets, you can see that it's really genomic regions object um, with, with our coordinates. Um, here I provided examples for HEK27 acetylation from B cells, HEK27 trimethylation from B cells, and FGF2 um, from induced pluripotent stem cells, just so we have um, as a part of this of this package as an example, just so we have some some comparison. Um, and as I said, um, all of the functions can also do comparison of multiple region sets, and so you can just combine um, individual genomic regions, uh, uh, genomic ranges into G ranges list with this simple command. And you have your um, GRL list object with um, with all genomic ranges within it. Okay, now that we have um, data loaded, let's let's start let's start looking actually at the individual functions. So the first feature that we're offering is the distribution over over chromosomes. So where do the 
individual regions fall onto chromosomes. Uh, so for that, we'll be using calc from bin's ref function. Notice that it's really ending with ref. So here I'm just providing first, um, I'm gonna show, be showing an example how to, how to run this function with a single query. So I decided to, to look at the FGF2 from induced pluripotent stem cells. So you just provide your query and all you really need to do is type ref assembly is AG38. Um, this calculates um, this calculates um, uh, how many regions fall into uniformly distributed bins across chromosomes. So when you look at this table, you have the, the first the, uh, the individual bin coordinates. Then you have um, you have the ranking within with, uh, the ranking of the coordinate. Uh, within um, the whole genome, then um, ranking of a coordinate within individual chromosomes, and last, how many regions did fall into the individual bins. So once we take the output really from this function and we plug it into plochrom bins, really notice that um, the functions are, are called the same, we get a distribution of the regions across chromosomes. But um, as I said, we can also do the same for multiple queries. So uh, before that, I created the GR list object, which combines all of the three data, uh, data sets. You can see that I'm using the same functions, uh, the same function instead of, but I'm just plugging in the GR list here and uh, specifying the ref assembly. Now we have the same, the same table but we have just now an extra column um, called name, so uh, which specifies the you know the, da the data set from which um, it originated. And then once I plug uh, plug the, this table again into the same plot function, it's again plot from bins, bins function. It doesn't have an, um, a different name. I can now do a simple comparison. Uh, uh, between between the individual regions where you know the regions of the individual region sets are colored by different color. Our next functionality is um, this uh, our functions for calculating the distances from uh, transcription start sites. For that we're using uh, calc feature dist function um, which is designed to calculate um, distances between um, between G ranges objects, but um, we realized that you know it's pretty common to uh, to be uh, to be looking for for distances from transcription start sites. So our ref function has also TSS at the end, and um, so once you use this function, we provide you the coordinates for or for transcription start sites automatically again. So first you again calculate the distances to TSS and then you do plot feature dist. And um, here you can see really comparison of the distances to, um, um, to the nearest transcription start sites. Here I actually, I was reading in the, in the workshop instructions that there should be a few exercises maybe involved. So I included an exercise here. So using the previously calculated TSS this object, um, a plot histogram of distances to TSS within 5 KB. So we can see that here we're looking at the distances just within, uh, within 100 KB, um, KB region. So let's zoom in for 5 KB, it's argument size where regions for the then plus minus 5 KB will be accumulated into um, these infinite in infinite bins, it's argument in bins. I do have the exercise solutions here, voila. Um, so basically our plot functions, they, they have also like, you know, additional features. It's not only that that you just you, ju you just plug, plug an object and then you can edit it in um, as, a, as a GG plot object. We do provide some of, some of, you know, plotting functions. So like you can see that once we say size, 5 KB and inf bins um, that we want to plot in bins, we get these plots where, um, yeah, the HVK27 association and the HVK27 
27 trimethylase, she should be further away than the transcription factor that we have here. So it's nice to see that most of the regions actually like really fall or fall uh, further than 5K being. Okay, let's go to the, um, to the next function offered by, um, by genomic distribution, which is distribution over genomic partitions. Um, or genomic part by genomic partitions, we need um, we mean genomic you know annotation classes such as exons, introns, um, promoters, etc. Again, we provide um, ref function. The specific name of this ref functions is called partitions ref. Um, and uh, once you do again plot partitions function, you see the results here, where you can see. Um, basically, the number the number of regions falling uh, falling into a given partition, and um, here we are actually plotting. I, the default in the plotting function is plotting frequencies. So you know, if one region if one region set has ten regions and another region set has one thousand regions, just to make it easier easier to compare. Um, as you can see, the the ref function actually provides annotations for exons. Five prime UTR intergenic of uh, the the rest is classified as intergenic regions, introns, core promoters versus proximal promoters. Where core promoters are the hundred KB from transcription start sites, and proximal promoters we set up as two KB. Did I say hundred KB? I meant hundred base pairs. Sorry, proximal promoters are two KB, and then three prime UTR. Yes. There is a yeah, question. Yeah, so is, is, the, is the function using a, a, a TXDB object behind the scene to, 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 to know about, you know, the well, how, how does the function know uh, the location of exons, genes? So, so we, um, so that's, that's what I'm saying. Like we provide annotation, annotation data that we built from, I, I believe that we built it from GTF objects directly, right? Or did we use um, some, some annotation. We might use the ensemble DB objects. Yeah. So yeah, I think okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 so yeah, this we okay. we we built these annotations. So we do have functions for how to build this from GTF. I'll I'll show you where you you know if you give us GTF file, we'll build this for right. you. Okay. But but yeah, we we yeah I think that we did use the ensemble, but uh and we just. Put it on as a part of the genomic distributions data package associated with. Oh, uh, so there is a data package. There is a, there is a data package associated with with genomic uh, genomic distributions. Yeah, okay. just so we can we can like make these ref functions and provide the the annotations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. But so so yeah. Um. In addition to to the uh, just. Simple distribution over genomic partitions. We also provide um, a function named calc expected partition ref, which um, basically, if you think about it, your exons are way smaller than introns. So, um, calc partition uh, the expected partitions functions are kind of correcting correcting for 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 the sizes where we're we're looking where we. Um, we're basically we're calculating expected expected number of overlap based on con uh, the size contribution of individual partitions to the size of the genome, and we're just assuming you know uniform distribution of the regions across um, across um, across the genome. So with this function, you can then you can then see. Um, if your if your number of overlaps is higher or lower than than you would expect, basically. So if it's higher than you would expect, um, you you have the the log ten of observe observe over expected um, in the in the positive values. And when you look at this here, the FGF two uh, FGF two, which is a transcription factor, is actually highly enriched in, in core promoters. Which which really which really makes sense, right? That should be close to transcription start sites. The next function um, that we're offering is um, it's now called signal summary in regions. Um, this function actually requires you to provide 
to provide your own matrix with signal values. So like where um, in the in this matrix, there would be the first column are uh, where where each row is a genomic region across across genome, um, and each column is is condition. The motivation for this function is that I work with bulk data. I had some chip seek experiment, and I was wondering, can I are these regions important for specific cell types? So then um, we build this matrix of um, we build this matrix where I um, I took basically all of the defined regions across genome um, that that might have open chromatin. And I looked at um, a taxi a taxi data on 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 encode and build this matrix, basically assigning um, normalized normalized um, signal a taxi signal across different different cell types. And then um, so, but you know, in the end, you can you can build whatever matrix you want. You you might be wanting to, and, and, and <clears throat> I'm sorry. And then the the calculation function is 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 basically then. Um, just summarizing the signal within within your regions within your regions of interest. So if we're using the calc summary signal function, you provide query, and uh, here we're providing the open signal matrix, which is again part of um, part of uh, genomic distributions data 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 package. So we provide those for AG thirty eight, AG nineteen. And um, MM10 genome, and this matrix then then has the the chromatin accessibility normalized chromatin accessibility values across different cell types. So once you run this matrix, what you get uh, once you run this calc summary function, you get um, you get a list where uh, where you have signal summary matrix where now it's going to return you the the, the signal values within your regions of interest for each cell type, and it's also going to give you um, summary summary of those values. So box plot statistics. So we can see that um, for AGK27 installation and trophoblast, we have lower whisker, lower hinge, median, upper whisker, and upper hinge. So once you Plug this, um, uh, plug this object into plot summary signal matrix. You get um, you get a summary a summary of these values of the signal values across uh, across different different cell types. Um, if you if you plug it in without metadata, this is all going to be this is all going to be black. So we provide we provide metadata uh, where we assigned the so where we first have to have you have to just have a um, a column name call name which is going to have the same names as as your you know your signal matrix and then you can provide whatever whatever you know here here I'm assigning the individual cells to to tissue type and then I say well my metadata is is in this cell type metadata object and I want to color color my groups based on on tissue type. And so uh, here I'm plotting um, here I'm plotting bar plots um, where I'm showing medians um, of the for for a given for of, of the signal values within individual cells. And so actually when you look at that, here we have HEK27 trimethylation, which are repressed regions. So we are really expecting the signal values to be low there since it's open chromatin. Um, well, here we have HEK27 acetylation from B cells, and as, as you can see, the median is the, really the highest in, in B cells. And here are IPS cells, so we would expect high, um, you know, high, high signal anywhere. <clears throat> in our next function, the, the last yeah, and our next function um, is we're looking at the at the region widths, where you don't apparently like you know obviously you don't need you don't need any annotation uh, annotation function for this. So we're just um, we're just providing this calc width function with no ref extension, which calculates the widths widths of your of your regions. Um, but the unique functionality that we're providing here is 
this plot QT hist function, um, which basically eliminates long tails. I don't know, you know, if you if you usually plot the widths of your of your functions and you plot it as histograms, you have these huge outliers that um, that 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 just kind of skew your skew your histogram. So here we're back actually setting a threshold where um, based on based on your input parameter, I think that the default is two percent. The the top and uh, the top and bottom, the the smallest and the largest regions um, are just accumulated in these in these in these bins. And this way you kind of overcome overcome the, the long tails and you can just see the, the nice distributions. Um, the next functionality is distances to the to the nearest neighbor. Um, we um, for that we're using calc neighbor dist um, function, which is really when you take your region of interest, you're looking how far is the closest closest region, and then how far is the closest region region to it, and <clears throat> you can. From this, you can basically infer is my data um, like you often see this kind of like by by model distribution where you can see that you know these are these are kind of like regions that are possibly clustering like close to each other. They're close to each other, and then there are regions that are like on the other hand like very far away. So like you can kind of infer this clustering properties of your of your data sets. The last two functions are um, are looking at GC GC content and dinucleotide frequencies in your in your um, in your genomic regions. These two functions are a little bit different um, because they they for that you actually need to provide a BS genome object. We might change that actually eventually that we might do that just from FASTA file, but at this point you do you do need you do need um, BS genome object. So like here, uh, we have AG19. So I, I load um, BS, BS genome um, for AG, AG19 um, and provide, along with my query, um, I provide to calc GC content function, the BS genome object. And here I have uh, the final output where we're looking at the GC, uh, yeah, the, the frequency of GCs within within individual within individual regions. The next function is very, very similar. Again, you need BS genome object, but instead of looking at GC content, you're looking at the dinucleotide frequencies. So you can compare dinucleotides across across your genomic regions. So um, this is basically the, the the summary of all the functions that 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 we provide in genomic distributions. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward to to use these functions. It's usually just like really two lines of code, and and you you just get the, get these plots. I use it pretty often. I you know before it's 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 pretty cool, um, but. If you're not working with human, with human or with mouse data, I would be just annoyed to to you know I would be like oh my god so I have to I actually have to get to the list of my transcriptions third side to provide that to to the functions well hell no whatever no I'm not really interested in those kind of plots but as I said you don't have to worry um, all you need to do in order to run all of the functions. Um, except for the GC content and the dinucleotide frequencies, is um, GTF file and FASTA file. So let's see how, how we can build those references. So let's start, uh, let's start with FASTA file. In this package, I actually provided um, a FASTA file from FASTA file and GTF file from C elegance. So you just basically need to give us a path to FASTA file locally on your computer, or you can even just give us URL and our, uh, and then and then you know use our function. So um, what what do you need? Um, 
In our functions, you might you might need chromosome sizes. So to get those is you just get get chromosome uh, sizes from FASTA, and you just give the paths path to the FASTA um, FASTA source, and you can use the either convert to uh, and if you have ensemble and and um, uh, FASTA from ensemble, but your um, but your regions are UCSC, you can actually just write convert ensemble to UCSC. And you're going to have the uh, the UCSC um, UCSC format annotation. So then you have your chromosome sizes. Um, from chromosome sizes, in order for you to build uh, to build the you know distributions across chromosomes, you need to provide uniformly sized bins across chromosomes. So to get those, you just uh, pass your chromosome sizes to this get genome bins function. You can specify how many bins across the whole genome you want to create, and you get GRANGES list object, um, where for each chromosome you will have, you have, you will have it separated to uniformly sized bins. I'll show you in a second how to plug that into our calc functions. Um, the rest of the annotation classes are going to be extracted from GTF files. So again, you just provide a path to your GTF GTF file, and um, in order for you to get the list of transcription start sites, you use get TSS from GTF, uh, from GTF, and and that's it. Again, you're given GRANGES object where we have really the coordinates of of TSS. As you can see, that it's really one base pair, one base pair size um, regions. In the next function. You can extract your your annotation classes, you know, like promoters, exons, introns, and etc. Um, you first need to get used get gene models from GTF, uh, where you specify which features you actually want to um, you actually want to extract. So here we are extracting genes, exons, three prime, and five prime UTRs. And you can, as you can see, when you run this function. You have again genomic region um, G ranges list object for with coordinates for genes and exons and three prime UTR. But here we still don't have the promoters and introns. So for that, you then take your um, your your gene model list created created here and you pass it to the function genome partitions list, where you said my genes are gene models um, and you specify that, that it's genes, you know, um, and then you can actually uh, set up what are your, do you want to get both core promoters and proximal promoters? What are your um, core promoter sizes? You know, uh, you might not want to do default and get proximal promoters to, to, to KB, which I did try and in yeast, it then told me that I have, I, I have, you know, partitions larger than the whole genome. So, so yeah, so that failed. So yeah, can, you can actually like really set it up. And then what you end up is the partition lift with, with um, promoters, three prime UTR and all of the annotation classes you might need. And, <clears throat> and that's it. This is how you really build up your, 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 all of your annotations needed for all of the functions that, that I have shown you. Um, I don't think that we'll have time yeah, so you've got to go to, to go through that. Questions. So 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 I, I I you know you can you can go through that. Um, it's you just really pass it to the calc function without the without the extension ref. But I would just like to address one last one last thing. Uh, as I said, our if you want to customize our plotting, the output of the plot functions are really just ggplot objects. So let's say you don't like the you don't like the color, you don't like the color or you don't like the title or, or whatever. So let's say this is this is the, the original plot. Um, you just plot the plot neighbor dist function, but save it into SP equals plot neighbor dist function. And you can just set scale fill manual, scale color manual to whatever you know values you want. And you can just say, well, you, you can add GD title and, and rewrite it. You can you can just change the whole thing. Basically, you just add layer like additional layers to ggplot object. 
um, if you're doing comparison of multiple region sets. If you have just one region set, you just need to actually reset the properties of your of your original original ggplot. So like once you save the the ggplot object, you can either you know change like add additional layers or you can change the color settings according to 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 how I'm showing it here. But it's actually like really easy and we really try to make all the functions very easy to use and also like really flexible. So you don't have to like then plot something and be annoyed that oh I have to replot it because in my publication I want it in a different way. So 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 yeah. I don't know if there are any any questions. I have a um, um I I'm working with bacteria, so could I use that library with uh prokaryotic genomes or would there be some Tricky part. Try it, and if you run into issues, just leave an issue on 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 our GitHub page, and I'll and I'll try to help you. Right. Or just like really shoot me an email. It should I think that it should be possible, but if it's circular genome, I'm not sure. I had never worked with. Oh, circular so it didn't have exons and introns, and it's like yeah, it has. Um, yeah. So like it, it shouldn't be a problem. Like it, you you can actually specify what what well, you want uh, to yeah. extract from the yeah. DTF file, mm -hmm. but. I don't think that it should be a problem. Okay. Yeah, I'll try but, it. But really, if you run into if you run into issues, shoot me an email or or just leave an issue on GitHub and I try I'm trying to be like pretty efficient and and answer quickly. But sometimes <laughs> it takes a day, you know. It's but, okay, but, okay. But, yeah. Thanks. Um so we work with like a lot of different species and I was wondering how like if we were to build our own references, if there are any recommendations for like different uses of bin count based off like genome size. It's like if you have like a really small genome versus like a really big genome, if you have the same bin size across the whole thing. I just do it. I just do it empir empirically. Okay. Well. okay. So no, I just like really here. I'm just showing an example. Like you can really get like high resolution and set up like really like a large number of bins, and or like if you set like small number of bins, it just really very much depends on what you're trying to get out of it. I just really try different settings and get the plot that I like the best. <laughs> Don't worry. There's a, a couple online, one from uh, Rohit saying, by any chance, does your package use annotator, uh, our package that has similar functionality? I don't think so. Okay. And then another question from Rohit, uh, do you have functionality where we wish to compare our enrichment of User set regions in a particular genome region, say exons, introns, five prime, UTRs, three prime, as composed to a randomly sampled regions of the same nucleotide composition. We do not have that now, but that is like that might be actually nice functionality where we could potentially. I'm not sure. Like at this point, we we do have the you know we do have the function that is that is showing the observed versus expected uh, frequency or or like versus expected frequency, okay. but but that's just like looking at the sizes. But at this point, like we do not offer um, any anything like this. Yeah. Okay. But I think that that the that the idea is kind of similar. And Same one way. more from Rohit. How do you handle regions and user sets that overlap with more than one feature, like overlapping with intron and UTRs? Okay, so for that, we are actually, um, we have we have two ways to do that. So in the first one, we're just kind of, you need to provide the, the partition list um, in a sorted way. So if it overlaps with the first, first class, um, the region is kind of like you know tossed out um, from the from the from the region set, and it's not accounted for like in the in the next round. So so basically, yeah, it, it's it's priority. Pr priority. I was looking for the for the word. Thank you. So so you have to give us like priority list, but in the in the calc function we have we have an option called BP overlap. Um, so if you set it up to true. It's looking at the proportional overlap. So, like, if it overlaps both introns and exons, so any let's say like half, um, you know, one third goes to exons and two thirds goes to intron, then I'm just going to count it as a one third 
and two thirds, two thirds here. So I actually use the, the BP, the BP overlap function a lot. What else? I have one question. What else is? Um, so I do like it that you've got the custom reference there at the bottom. And, um, but my question, so could you just like, oh, you can use HG19 or HG38 or MM10. But those, the chromosome designations are very different depending on which database your genome comes from. So are these, is the default UCSE or is it, the um, or Ensemble, can you switch to NCBI? So, so you can either just provide your GTF file and do it, do, do, what, do whatever you want. Um, but the default is UCSC, like the, it starts with CH, CHR, the UCSC, but like, yeah, we were using the, um, like, yeah, these annotations come from, from the package that I forgot the name now. I am just yeah. kind of like, you know, I'm all in for what? Excuse me? Was it that we just converted it? Uh, I think so. I will, yeah, I, I'm yeah. kind of like blanking out right now, but like I can, I can, I can get back to. Don't yeah, worry. Oh, no, listen, I, just, I might just make a recommendation that you are explicit in your materials about it's not just HG19. It's you know chromosome IDs for assuming either UCSC or Ensemble. Where here's how you convert them. If you've got NCBI, you need to do a custom rec or something, something like that. Because oh, okay, it's a that's a place where people can get tripped up. Okay. Yeah, that's a good that's a good recommendation. Something, yeah, in the in the yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay, well, join me in thanking uh, Christina again for one. We got about a few twelve minutes until our final well penultimate session, I guess. Okay. I'm going to go find one. <laughs>